The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no haversack, no coppers for their purses. They were to wear sandals, but he added, do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, if you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you, and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set off to preach repentance, and they cast out many devils, and anointed many sick people with oil, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So the theme for today's uh, Mass and readings, if you had noticed when the Mass started, uh, the slide was up, it's actually the missionary church. Now you can imagine why such a theme is chosen for today, because in the Gospel, we see Jesus sending the twelve out as missionaries, right? And he sends them out in pairs, telling them just to bring a staff. And then there's a whole list of things they're not supposed to bring. Very unlike some travel itinerary, you know, you're going for a tour or something, they'll tell you the things you should bring. Jesus is telling them the things not to bring. <laughs> Very strange, huh? Because yes, they are not going for any leisure trip. They are going for mission. And despite the fact that it's going to be tough, he wants them to rely on God and only to bring the bare necessity, which in this case is a staff. Okay, so if you're tired on the journey, if you're walking, a staff really will help you. Okay, he wants them to complete the journey. He wants them to reach their destination. Whether they are hungry or not does not matter, but they should reach the destination where they are going to, so they need a staff. Yeah, so the bare necessity that is needed for them to fulfill their mission. But did you realize there's something else that he asked them to bring without telling them that they should bring? And what was that? A companion. Right? He didn't send them one by one. Right? Instead, he sent them two by two. Okay? Despite the fact there were so many places they would have to go to, he did not think... Ah, I think better I send one by one. My message will reach faster. I can reach more places. Because he knew, not only is the staff essential, the companion for the journey is also essential. You know, if you have fallen down and you are not able to pick yourself up from the ground, even with the support of the staff, how do you think you're going to get up if not with the helping hand of another companion to pull you up? Okay, hopefully both also didn't fall at the same time and both also are stuck on the ground. Anyhow, there's only so much we can do to prepare ourselves, isn't it? And so, let us take note, Jesus asked them to take a staff, but also not to go alone, but to have a companion. Okay, so now, just keep that in mind. And I have a question to ask all of you today. What does all of this have to do with me and with you? So ask yourself that question. Am I a missionary? For you to ask yourself this question. Am I a missionary? If you're a lady, you'll be thinking, I'm not wearing a veil. I'm not a nun. If you're a man there, you, are, you might say, I'm not a brother. I'm not a priest. Am I a missionary? Okay, so sometimes we have this wrong idea, thinking that the missionaries are only the priests, the deacons, the religious sisters, the nuns. Yeah, and the religious brothers. Yes, they are missionaries. Yes, we are missionaries. But do you realize that each one of us in this church here, every one of us, every lay person even, every family man and woman, you are also a missionary. Where you are, that is where your mission is. Okay? So when we talk about the church, we also talk about the domestic church. Have you all heard of this, the domestic church? 
What's the domestic church? Your families, your homes. That's also that little church, that little church community. And if you're a married person and you have a family, know that you are a missionary in your little domestic church. And now this little domestic church is supposed to be actually an outpost of mission. You may find you are the one Catholic house in a whole row of houses. And that is the presence of Christ in your little taman. It's there. He's there. And He wants to be that light through you for all the people who are living in your kampong, your taman, whatever it is, your condominium, your flat. You are there as the missionary of Christ. Were you aware of this? Okay, I know I see some also wearing veils, though they are not sisters. Okay. <laughs> and it doesn't mean all of us who are women have to start wearing veils and start behaving like nuns. And all of those who are men start wearing robes and start behaving like priests. That's not the point. Each one of us must be a missionary according to our state of life. Now, in the family itself, if you're a father, you're a mother, know that your first mission is to take care of your own household, to bring up the children, and to bring them up as godly, as godly persons, right? And what is it that you are going to preach to them, whether through your words, whether through your actions? What is it that you have to preach to them as God's missionary? And... It's very simple. It's the same thing that the church preaches to all of us every time we are here for the whole year in church. And what is that? Repentance from sin. Avoidance of evil. Total faith and trust in God. And being God's servant. This is what we are supposed to try to cultivate in our children. Yeah? Anyway, today's Mass is animated by the Standard 5 children. We're happy that they are actively participating in our liturgy and helping us to animate the Mass. Okay, good. So, my dear brothers and sisters, first thing for us to remember today, each and every one of us is a missionary and we are called to do the work of God in the state of life that we are in and where we are. To be that light of Christ for those around us, who those who live with us, for those with whom we have contact. Okay, now, you know, often we ignore the second reading, and I would like us to uh, pay a little bit of attention to the second reading today, as usual from St. Paul, this time to the Ephesians. It's a very beautiful reading, and I invite you, when you have time today or during the week, to go back and reflect on this reading. It will be too long to give a homily on the whole reading. It's a very rich reading. Every line could take 10, 20 minutes to explain. That's why we always ignore the second reading. So I'm only going to explain just one line, okay? Just to give you a foretaste of the richness of that reading from the Word of God to help us in our understanding of what it means to be a missionary. But more importantly, to help us to understand what it means to be a Christian. And more importantly, what it means to be a child of God. Missionary, Christian, child of God, in case you missed the trend of thought. Okay? So now, the, first, the second reading starts off with, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. That's the first sentence we heard. I'm not going to explain that sentence to you. I'm going to explain the sentence after that. Before the world was made, He chose us chose us in Christ, comma, sentence not over, to be holy and spotless, comma, Paul is long-winded, lots of commas, and to live through love in his presence, comma, <laughs> determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes, oh dear me, another comma, to make us praise the glory of his grace, Comma, his free gift to us in the beloved. Hmm, what's happening now? Comma, in whom, through his blood, we gain our freedom. Last comma, the forgiveness of our sins. 
I promise you one sentence only, right? It's one very long sentence. You write this sentence for your English essay, your English teacher will give you zero. Right? So many commas in one little sentence. Because the richness of the message Paul is trying to give to us. And it's okay if you catch something and you miss one of the commas. But the one point I want to bring out first to us as we meditate on this word of God that has come through St. Paul, the first thing I want us to take note of is that he has chosen us. So I've told you you're a missionary. But missionary by whose mandate? Why are you a missionary? Because you have been chosen. So this is a divine work. This is a holy work of God that has been entrusted to you. And you are called and chosen by God. So I hope that helps us to realize what an important mission I have, you have. You because we are chosen. And we are chosen in Christ. It is through Christ and in Him that we have been chosen. And it is only in having a deep relationship with Christ that we can fulfill the work, the mission that God has entrusted to each one of us, whatever that mission may be. Now, the next part of that sentence tells us to be holy and spotless. And this is what the church is encouraging us to do all the time. If you are a missionary of God, you must strive for holiness. If you are not striving for holiness, you are not God's servant. And if you are not God's servant, you can't do God's work. As simple as that. And God loves to choose sinners because you are a work in progress. And people seeing the effort also that you take to cooperate with the grace of God they will also see an example of what it means to struggle against sin and to try our best to follow the teachings of Jesus. That is why God chooses sinners, so that we can share the story of our repentance. We can share with others the way we have overcome sin in our life and how we have welcomed the grace of God. Now the last part here, to take note of the next comma, to live through love in his presence. This is the lofty vocation that each of one of us has. To live through love. What love? God's love. In whose presence? God's presence. You know, at the end of the Mass, what does the priest say? There are many formulas. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. That's one of it. Right? Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Right? Go in peace. That's another one. All of these are invitations and reminders to us that we are to live true love in the presence of God. Each one of us being an instrument of God's love and mercy wherever we may be, in our families, our workplace, wherever it is that God has placed us. So this is an important mission that we have. And so at every Mass, we are being sent out as missionaries, told to glorify God by our life. And how can we do that if not by being the most kind, the most gentle, the most loving person there is in your taman and in your row of houses and in your workplace? The most loving, the most gentle, the most kind, the most helpful, the most concerned, that is being the sacrament of God's love and that is bringing the light of Christ into the world, each one of us as God's missionary. And finally, this is how we become true children of God, blessed by our Father in heaven, living according to the teachings of our brother, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have re received adoption, as sons and daughters of God. And that is actually the final purpose of the mission. You know, whenever we live in sin, whenever we are slaves of sin, whenever we are slaves of the world, what happens? We lose our identity as a child of God. We have become what? A slave. A slave of whom? A slave of the devil. And what is, is salvation if not 
the repentance of our sins, receiving the forgiveness of our sins from God, and being freed from the yoke of the devil. Being freed from the yoke of our sins, from the slavery of sin. And that is how important the message of Christ is. He is there to restore the dignity of every human being. The dignity of human beings as children of God. And this cannot be achieved if we do not preach repentance, if we do not cast out the devils in our life, and if we do not care for the sick. Okay, so this is the last point I want to highlight. Maybe the first two things, repentance, casting out devils, we might not have thought much about that. It's like a given. But did you know our mission also is for the sick? Also for those who are broken by illness, those who are held captive by sickness. And that is why Jesus pays a lot of attention to all the sick, healing them, and sending his missionaries out to anoint them and to cure them. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you find yourself in your family having to take care of someone who is sick, maybe an elderly parent, maybe it's a sibling, maybe it's your own children, someone has fallen sick, know that this is not a burden. This is a mission from God for you. And it is a holy thing to care for the sick, to have time for them, to anoint them, to feed them, and to help them to continue living a dignified human life. Yes, sickness often, often robs us of the opportunity and the possibility to live a dignified life. But with the help of God, through us who are able-bodied, they still can retain and maybe even regain some quality of life. So this is also a holy mission and I hope that we will not be afraid of it. You know, being a caregiver is really a heavy cross to bear. And if God has called you to be a caregiver for one of your loved ones, know that you are really a missionary. Even you don't have time to come to church, even to for mass, you don't have time to go for what Bible study, no time to participate in your BEC, because you're there taking care of somebody sick in your house. Know that you are doing a holy work of God and nobody should stop you from it. Because God, in his heart, first place is for the children who are sick and who have lost their dignity because of sickness. So don't be discouraged. And know that even if nobody wants to help you, yes, because people are afraid to get involved. Yeah? When you have someone sick in your household, and if you are involved, you lose your spare time, you lose your me time, you lose your whatever time, and you would say, better I think I leave it to my, this other relative, I leave it to this other sibling, Whatever the reason may be, sometimes there may be a valid reason even. Huh? But know that even if nobody wants to help you, God is your helper. Has any one of you thought that God is your helper before? Depend on Him. By His strength and by His grace, you will be able to carry the cross of being that angel of God's love for that person who is under your care.